Hello viewers, this is Manash welcoming you to the series You the Oracle Expert, your one-stop shop to learn and practice Oracle Database Administration and Unix with hands-on experiments using Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines. Build your knowledge base, confidence, and make your way to be an expert Oracle DBA. So today we are going to learn how to alert on blocking locks using OEM metric extensions. I am using 3 SQL plus sessions with system user to create the blocking lock situation and 1 session using Toad with sys user to capture the blocking lock related statistics. All the SQL statements that I am using in this sys session can be found in a text file in my Google Drive and I have shared the link to that file in the description of this video below. And I have already created one test table in the system user schema. The name of the table is test lock with two columns. The first column named n that stores the numerical values and the second column called s that stores character values. And I have already inserted three records to that table. And these are the three rows 1a, 2b and 3c. And this second SQL statement we are using to get the information about all these three sessions established using system user and the first session with the SID 76, the second one with 90 and the third one with 288. Now let's execute a simple DML or update statement in the first SQL session, then second and third and we will create a situation where the second and the third session will be waiting for the first session to release the lock on the test lock table and this update statement will be update test lock set and equals to 4 where and equals to 3 and we'll execute a similar statement in the second session but to set the value of the n to a different value. See, it's 5. But this session is also targeting the same row. So it goes to a hung state because the first session has not yet released the lock on the same row. Now we'll execute a similar statement but setting a value of n to say 6. And this session is eventually going to a hung state or the waiting state because in the queue of sessions requesting the lock the first session already got the lock and it has not completed the transaction so it's still holding the lock the second session is waiting for the first session to release the lock and it is in a waiting state and the third session is waiting for the second session to complete its transaction and in the queue of waiters it is in the second position now if we try to extract the session information of all these three sessions using the same SQL statement in the wait event or the event column we will be able to see that the second and the third session is assigned with nqtx row lock contention and we can see that these two sessions are having this wait event now this is a blocking lock situation until and unless the first session completes the transaction by either rolling back or committing the transaction these two sessions will continue to wait and this is a situation we often encounter in our database systems that creates severe performance issues with blocking lock contention now we'll go ahead and extract the blocking lock related statistics using this sys session from the database firstly to detect blocking lock issues or blocking sessions using sql plus we have a few different views in Oracle to get different piece of information about locks, which are V$ lock, V$ locked object, V$ session, DBA blockers, DBA waiters, etc. And I am using these views in my SQL statements. And now that SQL statement that I am using here is useful in single instance as well as rack databases. And it gives us all the information about what instance ID, SID and serial number of the blocking and waiting sessions to detect an alert on blocking sessions or blocking lock contention is to use 
a matrix extension in OEM. Now to create the matrix extension, we have to first create the SQL statement that is going to be used by the matrix extension to extract the blocking lock related data. To create the SQL statement, we are going to take a copy of the existing SQL statement that we used for the rack instances and we will remove all the columns except the column that is giving us for how many minutes the blocking lock situation has been there. So this last column that is aliased as for minutes is giving us for how many minutes the blocking lock situation is going on. So you can see that the four minutes column is 24 now. So there's a blocking lock situation going for the last 24 minutes. And this information we will use to create an alert. We'll make a small enhancement here because we don't need multiple rows. Instead, we'll need the maximum number of minutes that is the blocking session is taking. So we'll put a max function there. And this gives us one single value, which is telling us what is the maximum number of minutes that blocking session has been there. Now we'll copy this SQL statement and we'll go to OEM, then go to monitoring metric extensions. Here we are going to create a new metric extension by clicking on this create button, metric extension, and the target type for this metric extension will be database instance. So select database instance there, put a name like detect blocking session. And the display name will be the same. And the adapter will be SQL. The description will be ME to detect blocking locks. Data collection will be enabled. Data upload will be yes. Use of metric data will be for alerting and historical trending. Upload interval one. Frequency by minutes, it will be run say every 10 minutes then click on next button and in the basic properties window we'll put the sql statement that we copied from our toad window that gives us the maximum number of minutes that the blocking lock has been there click on the next button now we need to create a new column in this space a column is nothing but a field which is going to accept the value returned by the sql statement and that value will be used to compare with the thresholds that we set to determine whether that alert is going to be a warning or critical alert. So we'll create a column first, click on this add button, new metric column, name will be same. You can put any name there, but we are keeping it as the same as the name of the field returned by the SQL statement. So for minute, display name will be the same. And it is a data column, value type will be number, no unit, category will be say response. And the comparison operator will be used as retardant. And for warning, we will put one. And for critical, we'll put 10. So ideally there should not be any blocking lock situation in a database. So that's the reason if anything blocking other sessions for more than a minute, then we'll consider it as a warning. And if it crosses 10 minutes, then obviously it will be a critical situation and we need to take action on that. The manually clearable alert will be false. Number of occurrences before the alert will be one. And we'll customize this message and we'll make it more meaningful to us. See blocking lock detected and within bracket we'll put four minutes is the value will copy the same message and it will be blocking lock cleared within bracket the fill name that is the four minutes is whatever minutes it is and obviously for the clear message it will be zero click on the ok button then click on next and in this page we'll use the default monitoring credentials click next again in this page we need to test our metric extension before we publish it against one of the target databases say we'll use this cat db as the candidate database to test this metric extension against 
click on select select this row again run test because our blocking lock situation has not been resolved yet so it is going to give us a big number here so we can see that the four minutes column is returning a value 35 which is obviously more than 10 minutes which is our thresholds for sending a critical alert so our test has been completed click next and everything looks okay so we will click on the finish button now the metric extension has been successfully created now before we actually implement this metric extension or deploy it on our database targets we need to save it as a deployable draft to save it as a deployable draft we'll select the metric extension go to actions menu and there we'll click on the save as deployable draft and once it is saved as deployable draft we'll select it again and click on the publish metric extension once we publish it it can be used by other administrators of this oem system so our blocking lock detection mechanism is in place and it has been successfully published now we'll deploy this metric extension on our database targets for our example purpose we'll deploy it only on one target database to deploy it select the metric extension click on the deploy to targets and then in this screen we'll click on the add button select our candidate database from this list you can select as many number as you want for the target databases but for our purpose we'll select only one here click the select button and then we'll press the submit button so a job to deploy the metric extension to the target has been submitted and we just need to refresh this page to see if the job has been completed and yes the entry has been gone means it has been successfully deployed on our one target now our metric extension is designed to run every 10 minutes and if you want you can reduce to less than 10 minutes so that you don't have to wait 10 minutes for it to run and send you an alert usually when you deploy the metric extension it immediately runs for the first time and ideally in this case we should also get an alert you can always go to the target database in our case the target database is catdb right click on the target click on the oracle database in the menu then go to monitoring and metric and collection settings and in this metric and collection settings space you will be able to see the metric extension that we just deployed and in our case this is the one that we just deployed with the name detect blocking sessions where we set it to run for every 10 minutes and if you want you can click on that and reduce the frequency to something like two minutes or even lesser and then continue button it will complain about the repeat interval being very low but you can ignore it for our test purpose and all you need to do is to press the ok button for the changes to to take effect but in this case we'll cancel it we'll go to the target databases incident page by clicking on the oracle database menu monitoring incident manager for our target database now we see that at the top we have a critical alert blocking lock detected for minutes is 45 so our blocking lock has been there for the last 45 minutes let's select the incident to get the detail page and once it displays the detail page go to the events tab and click on the message again and it will give us more details about what actions it has taken as per the incident rule set that we designed and we can see that in the comment section it has sent an email to my gmail id now in my inbox i can see at the top there is one email that is coming from oem system and this is giving me all the information i need about the blocking lock situation from which database for how many minutes etc etc now to resolve this situation we'll go to oem and kill this session go to the target databases homepage 
then go to the performance menu click on the blocking sessions select the session that has been blocking the other two sessions for the last over 45 minutes and then click on the kill sessions button it will ask for a confirmation click yes and there is a confirmation that the session has been killed and we'll be able to see that in the blocking tree now the second session is blocking the third session because if you remember we created a blocking tree by creating three sessions which were executing the update statement on the same row from the test log table one after another and if the second session is also continue to hold the log and don't do a commit or rollback of his transaction then we have the option to kill the same session from here then again we'll kill it and click on the yes button to confirm the killing of the session and now there is no blocking session in the database if you want you can also perform this kill session command from the sql prompt because we are already able to identify the blocking session its sid and serial number so using an alter system kill session with the sid and serial number of the blocking session we can terminate the blocking contention in the database so this is how we can resolve a blocking lock contention in the database to avoid severe performance issues in the database environment now that we have resolved our blocking lock contention we should also receive a corresponding clear alert from the metric extension that we designed so let's go to inbox and there we go we have received a clear message em event clear blocking lock cleared four minutes is zero and here are the details so viewers i hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful please hit the like button if you liked it and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss an episode in this series for the oracle dbs or similar educational videos that i am uploading every week